Stretching over 5,600 kilometers, the dingo fence is the longest man-made structure in the world, built primarily to protect livestock from wild dingoes. The dingo fence has had significant and often overlooked environmental consequences. In this video, we'll explore the unintended negative impacts of this iconic structure. Peter, what would happen if the wild dog took a hold in this country? Well, well cheap, cheap, cheap for everything to us. We'd lose our bloody livelihood. We'd be finished. Dingoes have long played a key role in maintaining the ecological balance of the outback. As apex predators, they regulate populations of smaller predators like foxes and feral cats, which in turn helps protect native species and keeps ecosystems functioning. By controlling these smaller predators, dingoes indirectly benefit many other native animals, such as ground nesting birds, small mammals, and reptiles. But what happens when their presence is removed from the equation? From 2019 until 2022, the South Australian government allocated $25 million towards the rebuild and reinforcement of their 2,150 kilometres of the dingo fence, with the aim of 100% eradication of all dingoes south of the fence within 10 years. The dingo fence, while initially built for agricultural protection, has created a situation where ecosystems have become unbalanced. The fencing has disrupted the natural predator-prey relationships, and in doing so, set off a chain reaction of ecological consequences. One of the most significant negative consequences of the dingo fence is the explosion of feral predators such as foxes and feral cats on the eastern side. Without dingoes to control their population, these non-native predator numbers have exploded, leading to the dramatic decline of many vulnerable native species. In some areas, this has led to the extinction of several native species. The bilby, the western ground parrot and the numbat are just a few examples of native animals that have been driven to the brink of extinction due to the unchecked predation by feral cats and foxes. Where dingoes are still allowed to roam freely, they keep the numbers of smaller predators in check, but with their exclusion we've seen a huge surge in these invasive species and their hunting habits have caused significant losses among our native fauna. The dingo fence also interrupts moving patterns of other animals, like emus. At the dingo barrier fence they get trapped and disorientated typically running along the fence line until they veer off or die of exhaustion. They are slaughtered along the fence line in the tens of thousands in times of drought. This is considered more humane than leaving the animals to die of dehydration and starvation and prevents damage to the structure. In addition to the direct impact on wildlife, the dingo fence also affects land management practices. Areas inside the dingo fence become heavily grazed, while outside, ecosystems struggle to maintain their health and resilience. Without dingoes keeping their numbers in check, kangaroo populations have significantly increased. This abundance of herbivores has put pressure on the land, leading to overgrazing and degradation of the fragile outback ecosystems. Overgrazing leads to the depletion of vegetation, which affects soil health, causes erosion, and reduces the land's capacity to support native plants and animals. A case study from 2021 showed that the regions along the pathway of the dingo barrier fence scored between 0.1 and 2.4 out of 10 in their environmental condition reports for 2019. When we remove apex predators like the dingo, we're not just losing one species, we're altering the entire food web. The effects are complex and often have far-reaching consequences for biodiversity. In response to these negative effects, conservationists and ecologists have worked tirelessly to mitigate the damage. Some have turned to programs designed to reduce the population of feral predators on the eastern side of the fence, while others advocate for a rethinking of the fence's role in modern Australia. We desperately need to reconsider the dingo fence into the context of today's environmental realities. It's not just about keeping dingoes away from farms anymore. It's about restoring balance to ecosystems that have been thrown out of whack by human interventions. The key now is finding solutions that balance both the needs of agriculture and the long-term health of Australia's ecosystems. Community involvement is crucial in addressing these issues. By educating farmers and local communities about the ecological importance of dingoes and biodiversity, we can work together to find solutions. The reality is agriculture in Australia isn't going anywhere, which means awareness and education are what can lead to a shift in perception, encouraging more people to advocate for coexistence between agriculture and wildlife. Researchers are increasingly focused on the ecological consequences of the dingo fence. By studying the interactions between dingoes, herbivores and the landscape, they aim to understand better how to manage these populations. 
By implementing holistic land management practices, we can create a healthier ecosystem that supports both agriculture and wildlife. It's about finding a sustainable balance after many years of favoring agricultural production. Removing the dingo fence would allow emus and kangaroos to disperse and their movements and populations to be regulated by the dingoes. This would drastically improve vegetation cover, animal welfare outcomes, and the dispersal of genetic material. For a healthier ecosystem, we need to rethink our approach.